I welcome each and every one for another power packed session for today. The lot of things are going to be unwound by Mr. Vaughn Eric Dandock. To invite him, we have a powerful person. I request Madam Sri Vidya to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much. And I especially thanks Rambabu sir for giving me this great opportunity. I'm very happy to be here as one of you. I feel very honored to invite Vaughn Eric Tandak sir on Share Every Platform, who is a speaker, author, a trainer, and a distinguished Toastmaster. He is a natural leader and a coach and a founder of a institute, Confidently Speaking, a book drive. He initiated a book drive for the children and a professional level publications, which were donated to his alma mater. He is the one uh, who has a, a book called as Say It Loud, Say It Broad, which is an Amazon best-selling book. It's a very great thing. He is the one, he is the one who believes that start small. Start small, achieve more. But the thing is that you must start. If you start, then only we will achieve success in our life. That's what he believes. Uh, okay. Combining a sense of responsibility gen with gentleness and humor, he is the one who has his mission clearly stated that I was born to bring out best in people. He is a person who believes in this uh, motto and the principle, which is great. We have been waiting for this so that we can learn so many new things from you. I heartily welcome you, sir. We are blessed to have you as a speaker tonight. We can also try to communicate in uh, different languages. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to you, sir. With this. The floor is open to Toastmaster Von Eric Tandak. Thank you very much. Yeah, so this is our topic for today. How are you going to communicate in different languages? We will be focusing on English today. We have someone from North Carolina, my friend, Ms. Laura Jones. Thank you for coming. So we have someone, a native speaker of English. I can speak four languages, three from my home country. We have eight major languages. Philippines has around 170 languages. I know India has a lot of languages too. All over the world, there are around 7,000 languages spoken. But only 23 are actually used by more than half of the population. Imagine, 23 out of 7,000. To tell you honestly, if I will have a superpower. That superpower is to speak and understand all the 7,000 languages of the world. How I wish I have that superpower. Imagine yourself. Imagine if you can speak all the languages in the world fluently, confidently, effectively. There will be a peace on earth because I believe communication is very important tool to have a peace in the organization, in the workplace, in the family. Even in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we need to have a clear communication. And how can we have a clear communication? Let's start. This is what I'm telling about communication. And I love this saying. Communication is not what you said. It is what the audience said. Think of what you said. So always remember that. If you are the sender, you are talking about pizza, but the receiver understands it as a donut. Do you think there's a communication there? There's no communication. Absolutely. Because the receiver misunderstood what is your message. So always remember, communication is not what you said. It is what the audience things of what you said. So it's not enough for me when I'm talking here, when I said pizza, but Miss Laura and others understand it as different food, then the problem is on me. Maybe the sender did not hear me correctly did, or not listening. It's still my responsibility that I should send the message clearly. So I know it's so frustrating when we speak in English and a native speaker will not understand us, right? It's so frustrating. But it is normal, okay? 
the one thing that you need to do is be calm and speak slowly. If you are a native speaker of Hindi, Urdu, Filipino, and when you speak another language, be it English, French, Spanish, one tip that I'm going to tell you is speak slowly. It is not what you said. It is what the audience think, feel of what you said. If you want to be a speaker, you have to speak. If you want to speak and learn the language, maybe French, Spanish, or English, then start speaking. And in public speaking, the only solution to stage fright is start speaking. And take into consideration, public speaking deals with attention. You as a speaker, your attention should be your audience. That's why I mentioned earlier, communication is not just what you said. It's the audience understand what you said. So be very careful with that. And of course, the audience attention should be in the speaker. The moment that you are thinking of thinking else, let's say you are thinking of your husband who is late at home that last night. Or let's say you're thinking about your wife who is mad at you. There's a big possibility you will not understand someone speaking to you. And that will cause trouble or problem in the communication. Okay? Public speaking is not acting. You are talking to someone. I saw many people when they are in the stage, they are like actor. No. Reserve that acting to the actors. This is not a film. Public speaking is talking from your heart. It is from the inside. Yes, we use hand gestures. Yes, we use eye contact and facial expressions. But we should not be acting. Because public speaking, you are talking to someone. And this is the bad notion about public speaking, why many are afraid of doing public speaking. They think public speaking is talking to 21, 22, 50, 100, or 1,000. No. Public speaking is talking to one person, and that is already public speaking, not the notion of 1,000, 10,000. Let's have the second most important when you communicate, and that is organization. When I mention organization here, I'm not talking to the big organizations that we belong to. It's the organization of your thoughts. Very important. In organization, when you do public speaking or you want to do presentation, make an outline. That is very important. And then when you speak, you have to capture your audience. You have to develop the opening. That's why when we speak, someone will introduce us because that's their responsibility is to capture the audience. That's why someone introduced me today, right? In organization, I'll tell you the three techniques when you communicate, when you present, or when you do a simple conversation. Always, always you have your opening. And then lead your audience to the body. The body is the message. And then you transition to closing. That is what we call conclusion, actually. So there are three parts of the speech. The opening, the body, and the conclusion. Whatever speech you will do. Be it two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes of speech, you have three parts of speech. And I always use this when I communicate to others. So that is organization, our number two, most important in communicating in different languages, be it presentation, be it public speaking, or simple conversation. Let's move on. No words. Anybody? Think of these two words, it's no words. When I say no words, our body speaks too. So that includes your eye contact, very important. When you're speaking on virtually, so you have to make sure that you are looking at that small camera, and that is eye contact. And you don't want to speak like looking up in the ceiling or looking in the floor, just like what I'm doing right now. 
So always maintain that eye contact. When you are talking face to face, one or one hundred person, you should have a, a eye contact. Just remember, okay, when you do eye contact, don't be creepy, or else they will they will feel awkward, right? It will be awkward if you will look into their eyes, gaze into their eyes like this. So just eye contact, a normal eye contact, but don't. Facial expression, okay? So the facial expression is really important. Your smile, that facial expression. Okay. So when you said you're happy, but your facial expression is sad, do you think there's communication there? You are giving a wrong signal to your audience. Move with purpose, okay? So when you're in the stage or you are in a conversation, a simple conversation when communicating, don't move too much. You have to make it sure that you move according to your words. So you have a specific gestures too, right? So use your hand, but specific gestures. So when you say, welcome, then of course your hands should be welcoming. You will not do welcome, but your arms is like this or your hands is like this. So it's not congruent, okay? And you own this stage. Always, this is what I tell my mentees, students, on this stage. When you say on this stage, the root word there is be confident. Don't be shy. So when you're speaking to an American, never think that you are bad in English. The moment that you think that you are not really good in English, then you're really good, not doing good. Because what you think will perceive on the outside emotion or outside physically. Okay? Henry Ford once said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you, you can't do it, then you're also right. So always remember that. So the moment that you said, oh, I'm not really good in English, or an American will say, oh, I can't understand Urdu. Well, that's true. So you own this stage. Okay? On this stage. This is one thing that I really wanted to tell everyone. Pillar words. What is pillar words? Anybody? Can someone tell me what is pillar words? No right or wrong answer. I just want you to know that you understand what I'm saying and what I have said or mentioned before. Communication is not what I said. So I just want to ask someone, any volunteer, if you want to put it in the chat box, it's better. What is filler words? Can I say something? Yes, absolutely. Filler words are those crutches that we use when we are groping for some words. When we are not sure of what to say next. Exactly. Then we tend to put in words and we tend to put in sounds. All right. And normally we call them killer words because they kill your speech, they kill your presentation. You're very right, madam. You mentioned the root word. Crutches here, and it will make it at a sound, right? Example of pillow words are um, yeah, so you know, you know, those people, you know, so it probably like that. You always hear pillow words, then they will not understand you more. Another pillow word is like ah, uh, like, those are pillow words. Filler words are words that are not necessary when you are speaking. So, avoid filler words. The question here is, are filler words bad? It's bad if in one sentence you have like more than two or more filler words. An example like this. My name is uh, Bon Eric uh, Pando. Uh, I live in uh, Canada. You know, so that's pillar words, right? So avoid that. One technique to use pillar words is the power of pause. So you stop in between. I will tell you this one. My name is Bon Eric Pandok. I live in Canada. So did you notice I stopped for a while? So one way to avoid pillar words is the power of pause. And I want you to remember this. 
Even the native speaker of English, they have lots of filler words. 